Hello everyone, I'm Bobby. Um, I just wanted to do this video uh, for you. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I've been working on a project uh, for my car. It's a, a Mitsubishi Eclipse and I'm building it for Time Attack. Um, I did actually shoot this video uh, about a week ago, but when I looked back at the footage, I didn't really like it. My camera's a bit funny on my phone. I can't flip it halfway through um, and I'm not very good at editing. So what I'll do is just give you a quick breakdown of um, the uh, item I've just built. It's a fuel tank. Um, and the reason why I wanted to build it is I wanted to make it a bit more compact, a bit more lighter. Um, have sections cut out so I can have an exhaust going over the top of it, not around it. So I can save a little bit of piping as well. Um, and just make everything better um so for fueling i've got quick fill so that'll be going through the window um and yeah that's pretty much it so let me turn this around so this is the fuel tank and there's some accessories that i've uh, got along with it which i'm going to add so let's start with the filler cap so this will be mounted into the window and then i've got two 10 an vents so as you quick fill all the pressure coming out of the quick fill will be released into these so i'm not going to get any excess um what's it overflow uh coming back up while filling the next thing i have is a a feed which is going to be from the hydra mat i went with the hydra mat purely because i wanted a bigger surface area uh, for a sock it had really good reputation and the reviews looked really good so i'll try that out um, i've got two bungs on here let me go to a wider view it'll be a bit easier um, when i bought this i didn't really think that far in advance of how i'm gonna connect everything so they've got these 5.8 push-on fittings um, and it's really hard to find a hose in the UK that actually fits this and that can be submersible. Uh, and it became quite a problem. So it took me a little while to figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to work around it. In the end, I decided to make one of these or two of these. So I put some O-ring grooves recessed inside there and these are nitrile fuel safe o-rings so they can be submerged all the time and what happens is you just put it on put it on straight it'll go in there you go. and then that'll just sit there and that'll create the seal and then i'll have the fitting which will be bolted on here and there's another one on the inside of here which will be screwed on to this side as well so it'll sit something like that inside the tank so i managed to fix that um, and that's one of the get that off again so i don't leave it on i'll just dry i put any lube on it uh, so that's one of the biggest uh, hurdles or obstacles that I came up with um, which I was really happy about solving that now when I came to the tank I had a few ideas for the tank um, I wanted to do a few things I wanted to drop some weight I also wanted to redo the exhaust because currently the exhaust comes around the fuel the current fuel tank and i just wanted to make it as straight as possible and then go straight out the back of the car um, and then it's a bit flatter underneath slightly less weight all in general and then i can have uh, when i build the rear diffuser it'll be a lot better at the back so the idea is the exhaust pipe comes along here goes up here i'll have this all gold lined uh, and the exhaust will be heat wrapped as well just in case um so that should help um the other thing is designing this was a bit tricky 
mainly because all the aftermarket fuel tanks have some kind of rollover protection. So I've built these myself. So let me go back a bit. When I was looking at designing all of this, I wanted rollover protection, of course. Everything was either really expensive, um, and I am uh, budgeting for a lot of stuff, or I didn't like the design or how it worked really, or how it mounted, um, should I say as well. So after I did quite a bit of research, I decided to build my own um, products. So what I ended up building, uh, or I machined a bunch of these. So these are just orb fittings. I don't know if we're gonna see inside very well. But there's some tubes inside there, which is all machined in one piece. Then I've got a couple of holes, which you can just see the reflection of the light. And they're just, uh, and that's exactly the same as this one. So this is an eight orb, and that's a 10 orb. So they will have stainless balls in the 10 AM, which goes up to the fuel uh, filler neck. And then these are rollover vents, so it will equalize the pressure as you're filling. And then also as the fuel gets used, it will let air back in to equalize the tank so it doesn't expand or collapse itself um, under usage. So this one will just have one stainless ball in it. This one will have a stainless ball and a Derlin ball. And the Derlin ball is a floating type ball. So it's as it sloshes around, it will push up and stop any excess just spilling out because this will be lower than the fuel filler neck one, which will be up quite high by the window. The other um, one I had to make was a built-in check valve or a rollover ball as well. So for the main filler neck, just in case it managed to find its way out of the filler cap itself, I decided to machine one of these which has an all-in-one big stainless ball in it again couple of holes for filling uh, I've checked this flow out and I can't seem to top this at all it I tested it on my fuel um, my <laughs> fuel station it was actually my kitchen sink tap um, and I had that on full blast and I could not get past that top hole so I welded a cap on the bottom Got a little o-ring on there to stop it from bouncing around as much and then that will connect to the bottom side of the fuel filler neck so that was a good interesting project on that um i think all of these bits that were machines uh, came out nicely they're to my design and i like them a lot better i can obviously service all of this stuff where some of the others you necessarily can't you can't open it you can't clean the balls or change the balls um so yeah that's pretty much the main basis i've got an atl volt fuel sender which i have in the um box over the back behind me uh, that's already trimmed down um and all i've got left to do is buy the uh, fuel foam to go inside which is just an anti-slosh anti-static um kind of material so it helps with the fuel and stop moving around as much. And also if you do get a puncture, it kind of just dribbles out, it doesn't spray out. So that is the fuel tank as a whole. I've got two feeds that are coming out because I'm gonna be running two of those into one pump, um, which is an inline pump. Then I've got them going to a fuel swell pot, which is actually currently drying because I painted that black right here. So that's the fuel swell pot. And then that will be going to another inline fuel pump straight to the fuel rail. So yeah, I, um, I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, do feel free to comment. Uh, I will try and answer them as best as I can. Um, oh, quickly before I go, that is the return from the fuel swell pot. So if it overfills, it goes back in here. And this is a 6AN, and that will be coming back from the fuel pressure regulator after it's been past the engine and fuel rail. 
Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I tried to keep it as uh, short as possible, but it's uh, quite a bit of detail that I could go on. I could probably talk to you for another half hour about it, about how I got here and all that sort of stuff. Thank you very much. Bye.